Well, I suppose the earliest practical bridge uh, in Brisbane was the Victoria Bridge. Initially, I think in the um, 1870s, they managed to get a timber bridge across, but that was rapidly eaten out um, by marine borers. And uh, I think it collapsed or they pulled it down and they built another one the, um, with, with iron um, piers, uh, which then washed away in the 93 floods. My mother's father used to tell the story that he was the second last person across the um, Victoria Bridge in 1893. And who was the last person? The policeman chasing me, he used to say. Because literally it stood around for about a day with the flood there and houses coming down and smashing up against it and it finally gave way. Uh, the second one probably is the Grey Street Bridge, which looks like a concrete arch bridge but is actually a steel arch bridge with a concrete wrap around it for environmental protection. After that, of course, the next big issue was to get across uh, the river further down, and the Story Bridge uh, was around for quite some time. The four or five of the senior engineers in the office I joined, um, Sir James Holt, uh, John Kindler, Humphrey Bramall, Frank Pitt, um, all had worked on the Story Bridge and most of them I think also on the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Of course the Story Bridge then piggybacked to all that information from the Sydney Harbour Bridge and they knew how to design good compression members. But that sort of steel truss bridge was labour intensive and by the late 1950s the uh, cost of labour on steel bridges was rising and hence uh, the number of pre-stress concrete bridges built since then, um, particularly in Brisbane, the Captain Cook, the Victoria and Gateway. So uh, that's a sort of introduction to the early bridges of Brisbane. Um, they were built very safely because of the fact that there had been disasters in the past. And uh, basically a steel bridge, well maintained, painted regularly, will last virtually forever. The Story Bridge um, means a lot to me on a number of different levels. Uh, Brisbane is my home city and the Story Bridge is in a lot of ways an iconic bridge. It's in some ways uh, an image which is synonymous with this place that I call home. So it means a lot to me in that sense. But I've also got uh, personal relationships to the bridge. One of my ancestors, my great-great-grandfather on my mother's side, was uh, an engineer. He uh, was at one time in his life, the Vice President of the Dominion Bridge Company, and it had built a steel cantilever bridge over the St Lawrence River in Montreal, um, a bridge that's now the Jacques Cartier Bridge. And uh, he'd finished building that in the 1930s, and having built the bridge, he was then invited to Brisbane to be a part of the construction of the Story Bridge, and he was the Chief Steel Engineer. Uh, during the time of the construction of the Story Bridge. So the bridge means a lot to me because uh, I wouldn't be here without it and uh, uh, and my family wouldn't be here without it. So you know, we owe the construction of the bridge here in Brisbane to the migration of my great-grandfather from Canada to Brisbane in the 1930s. There are, there are so many stories and anecdotes which gather themselves around construction projects like um, the building of the Story Bridge. Uh, th there's one story about uh, a biplane pilot flying his plane underneath the bridge right. and, uh, and causing quite a stir uh, when doing that. There are stories of uh, workers uh, harassing trawlers as the trawlers would take their boats out to sea along the river. Um, and every morning the same trawler would 
take his boat uh, out to sea and the same workers would be there, you know, um, yelling um, uh, humorous asides uh, at him. You know, so there are all of these sorts of stories which go to the building of a bridge and they, you know, they're part of the rich fabric, I think, of, of, uh, uh, yeah, of structures it's like, like a bridge, such as the story bridge. Well, the Story Bridge was um, critically important to the city, first as a way of linking the south side and the north side from Kangaroo Point across to the valley. And uh, there, there was another uh, bridge, the Victoria Bridge, across the river, but this was a bridge between the commercial district of the valley um, and Kangaroo Point in the south side. So it was an important bridge and one that had been mooted for, for many, many years. But it was also important at the time as a, an employment generation project. Uh, Brisbane, like much of the world, was coming out of the Great Depression and the 1930s was a time when unemployment in Brisbane and Queensland was high and this was a public works project which would generate employment for people. And so at the time that it was built, one of the, the catch phrases was that it was a Queensland designed, Queensland made and Queensland built bridge. You know, and so the government at the time was, was you know, harnessing uh, the fact that it was a, an employment generation project for, for the state and for, for Brisbane as a way of selling it. Uh, to people as well, and in, in, in truth that's, that's what it was, it generated uh, uh, important employment. And also I think what it did, it was a major visible project that people in Brisbane could see taking place over the course of five years. And I think that it gave a sense of confidence to people as um, they could see this uh, iconic project, this landmark project taking shape in front of them and the way that the bridge was built from either side of the bank to join in the centre meant that the moment of joining of the bridge was quite a dramatic moment and it was one that people in the city gathered around from all sorts of vantage points to, to see complete and when it was completed in some ways it was an achievement not just for the engineers and, and, and the workers who were involved in the construction of the bridge, it was an achievement for, for the whole of the city. It was called the uh, yeah, Cross River Rail Link. So it was uh, a project that had been, I guess, in the planning for about 70 odd years and uh, finally was coming to fruition through the um, state government and the railways department back then in the 70s. So I was working with Cameron McNamara, consulting engineers back then and uh, uh, 73, 74, we were working on obviously the design of the, the new structure so it was the linking basically between South Brisbane railway station and and uh, Roma Street so it was the first time that there was going to be a complete linkage between the, the rail network on the northern side and the southern side other than across the old Indrapilly Bridge so it's quite a major project obviously and a you know, big step forward for public transport in in Brisbane so um, the flooding incident uh, in the middle of all that design process we had the major 1974 floods, which was one of the highest floods um, up there with the highest floods in the Brisbane River. And um, at that stage, obviously, we had several design cases that we were looking at for the bridge piers. But during that flood, one of the uh, cement co barges that they used to transport uh, materials up to the cement works up at Darra uh, broke loose from its moorings and careered off down the river. It actually hit the uh, centenary bridge at the time, but um, we were worried, obviously, that uh, something of that nature could, uh, in the future, still occur. And uh, I guess in subsequent floods, we've certainly seen some major issues with pontoons and things breaking away. So to cut a long story short, we um, added a new design case into the design of the piers to allow for a runaway barge hitting the, the bridge pier and uh, that actually resulted in doubling the number of piles under, that, uh, under the two main piers in the river for, the, um, for that uh, Cross River Rail link. Okay, the Gateway Bridge uh, started off 
um, in the early 60s. It rested for 10 or 15 years until our minister, Russ Hins, who was a very good minister, and um, he went to Hong Kong, so the story goes, and went through the tunnel, linking the island to the mainland, and decided that this six-lane tunnel was just what Brisbane needed. And, of course, people used to add the bit that it would enable Russ to get across the river to the uh, race courses uh, at Eagle Farm a lot quicker and uh, avoiding the city traffic. And uh, that was the whole logic of this eastern bypass. Uh, we in the bridge department um, thought that a bridge was a much better idea. Um, there are no codes for design of such bridges. The design code stops at about 100 metres. And so you go back to first principles and you've got to look at everything, including, for example, the lateral bending of the compression flange. So, uh, Gateway um, was built successfully. Um, we think it will last a very long time. Uh, the second gateway, I managed to convince people that we would have a design life of 300 years. Um, why 300? Because you go up in decades and three is half a decade. I was the, um, the, the design manager for GHD. Um, we, we did the, the tender and the detailed design of, of, of the bridge. Um, so I basically managed the design team um, and we had people working in Brisbane, Melbourne and San Diego. Um, so we had a team spread around the country and, and, and in the US. Um, uh, we were working pretty closely with John Holland who, who built the, the job. Um, so it was a very, um, I suppose, I I interactive and uh, busy um, job. You know, the, the, the bridge that's out there at the moment is very different to the concept that was actually thrown in in, in the first place. And, and that's, it can be quite common with, with bridges around a concept that, that gets put up and an architectural theme. Um, but then we got our architect, um, Denton Corker Marshall, involved and um, come up with some really good ideas for, for how to adjust the bridge and how to get something that sat in this sort of um in, in in the area that it is a lot better and um, so it was you know it's, it's quite a, a, a different bridge than was actually um um i suppose in originally planned one thing that pre people probably don't realize about the bridge the whole thing was pretty much prefabricated in sections even the deck and um, like all the steel steel panels were all um uh, they're all obviously made up in advance and then lifted into place all the deck panels were all sort of prefabricated and dropped in place and then just concreted in place. So the whole thing had to be basically built electronically. And um, so all the bolts had to be in the right places. All the bars had to fit each other. Um, and then when it was all dropped in place, it could be sort of all concreted in. I suppose it was just one of those things, one of the, those type of bridges, you're very much involved with the construction of, of them. And um, we had a few areas when you're doing a cable stay bridge like that, um, particularly when you get the two ends are getting close to, to, to each other, um, they move up and down a lot. Um, so I remember the last stage just before we actually joined the bridge together, the, the two sides of the deck were about three meters apart and about a meter and a half level difference. Um, we were wondering if we were going to get on the front page of the news at that stage, because it was all planned, but it was it looked very, very um, like one of those things that you see on, on, on the, um, you know, like disasters going wrong. Um, but uh, obviously nobody noticed, so that was good. So I think as a green bridge, um, and it's become more of a, a, a like a, I suppose a more normal thing now to, to a green bridge being a, a bridge that promotes um, alternative forms of transport and reduced reliance on, on public cars. And in fact, as you're probably quite aware, Brisbane City Council is, is, is embarking on a fairly large program of green bridges now, which we're helping with as well. So um, it, it's quite, quite an exciting time for uh, Brisbane.